right, we're going to be in Genesis chapter number 41, Genesis chapter 41, and been enjoying my time looking at the life of Joseph and preparing the messages and just really considering the life of Joseph and how much Joseph went through from uh, the time that God gave him this vision to the time that he saw that vision fulfilled. And tonight we're going to look here in Genesis chapter 41 and beginning in verse number 1. We're going to read down through verse number 24. It says, And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. Behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the river, uh, stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprang up after them, and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. It came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servant and put me in ward and the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to his inter the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man in Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret it. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favored, and lean flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt, for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kine did eat up the first seven fat kind, and when they had eaten them up, could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good, and behold, seven ears withered, thin and blasted, and the east wind sprang up after them, and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could de declare it to me. Let's read verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. So we're going to pray. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Joseph at this moment. And let's pray. Father, we want to come tonight and look at the, Joseph's life with an open heart, Lord, an open mind, and ready to receive what your word teaches us about the life of Joseph and how much he overcame in his life, how much he got through in his life, the temptations and the, and the pitfalls, the stops along the way that tried to prevent him, and yet he was able to go forward and fulfill the will that you had designed for his life. And Father, as we go out throughout our life, there are many pitfalls, many things that try to prevent us from doing even the daily will that you have for us. Lord, just living a life that is honoring and pleasing to you. And I pray as we continue in our life, and as we continue to look at Joseph, we can see how we may overcome some of these difficult things that try to derail us on the road to seeing your will fulfilled for us. And so we pray that you would bless this time together. We ask it in the name of our Savior. Amen. So tonight we look at Joseph now for, I think, at least seven weeks <coughs> here in Genesis and seeing what he's overcome. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about overcoming our self-promotion or things that we want to use to promote ourselves. We've read a lot about Joseph and his overcoming, and I want you to 
consider this as we go into this, and we're going to look at a couple of verses in Proverbs, and then we're going to come back to Genesis. I'm going to grab my bookmark and put it in Genesis now. Joseph had a lot of difficulties he faced. From the time of living with his brothers that hated him to the time he was sold into slavery, the time that he went down into Egypt, a foreign land, with people of a different language, people of a different culture, people of different gods, living a life that was honoring and pleasing to the Lord, doing the best he can, being lied about by his master's wife, thrown into prison, and now here he's been in prison, awaiting for the day that God is going to move on his behalf. And I said last Sunday night, you know, many of us are in that area of our life where we're at a spot where it's easy for us to grow impatient, waiting on the Lord to do what it is God's going to do for us. We need to learn the virtue of just allowing God to move. Joseph was in prison at no fault of his own. He'd been thrown in there because of a lie. And here he was stuck in a place he didn't want to be. And when the butler and baker were thrown in there, he met these men and, and they each had dreams. And Joseph interpreted their dreams and they came true. The butler had a dream that he was going to give back to Pharaoh the cup. Pharaoh had thrown both the butler and baker as a background into prison. And the butler had a dream that he was going to take the cup and give it back to Pharaoh and Joseph told him, Pharaoh's going to put you back in office again. You're going to have your position back. You'll be brought up out of prison and put back in your position of, of, of service. When you do, remember me. Remember me. I'm here and that's not my fault. I, I did nothing wrong. He said, I'm in a strange land and I was sold into slavery. I'm just here and here I am in prison. And remember me when you get out. And then he took Baker had a dream. The baker's dream, he had three baskets on his head and the birds were eating the food out of the top basket, three baskets of food. And and Joseph said, your dream is that in three days, Pharaoh's going to take you out of here. He's going to kill you and hang you on a tree. And then the birds are going to eat your flesh. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> the Bible says the dreams came true that Joseph interpreted. The butler was put back in his office. The baker was taken and he was hanged and killed. And then the butler forgot about Joseph. <laughs> forgot all about him. For two years, Joseph sat for two more years in prison, waiting for the day. That God would move on his behalf. Last week I talked about how we need to overcome impatience in our life. And when God is moving and God is placed us somewhere, just let the God have his way. Let things take their course. It takes time for God to move. But in our passage tonight we read that after two years of being in prison, Pharaoh had a couple dreams. Do you ever have a dream woke you up in the middle of the night and you're like, what in the world was that? Oh, I hate those. <laughs> well, Joseph, Pharaoh had two of those in one night. The first one, he fell asleep, and there were some cows on the side. saw seven cows on the side of the, of the river eating away, and then seven cows came up that were, yeah, I can, let me put it this way. There were seven cows on the side of the river that were nice and big and fat, and then seven cows that were skinny and scrawny came out of the river, and the seven scrawny cows ate the fat cows. And when they got done, that's weird, isn't it? That's weird enough. That's enough to wake you up. When they got done, the seven scrawny cows were just as scrawny as and, and pitiful looking as when they began. Boy, a shocked Pharaoh. He woke up and said, what in the world's going on? Then he went back to sleep and was hoping it would get better, but it didn't. Then a corn stalk grew up and there were seven nice looking, fat, good looking uh, sheaves of corn on, on the stalk and then seven... Uh, sheaves that were withered and blasted and looked like they were just the most pitiful corns. You ever do that? You ever go to the store and you, you're picking out corn, you pull the very top off, and you're like, this looks great. You get it home and open it up, and it's just the rest of it's horrid. Like, oh, good night. That's what it was like. There's, no, there's nothing good in here. And those seven weak little, shrimpy little corns ate the seven nice, big, fat corns. And Pharaoh woke up and said, good night. I had too much pizza last night. This is crazy. What is going on? He was worried. He didn't know what he was going to think of it. So, as he was telling the people about his dream, the butler said, I remember. Two years ago, I met this guy that could interpret dreams. His name was Joseph. Yeah, that's what it was. He's in prison. And he asked me to remember, and I forgot all about him. I'm such, I haven't done that. Man, I forgot all about it. For two years, I forgot. So, I bet you he could tell you what your dreams are all about. So, the Bible says that here that Pharaoh said, go get Joseph. He said, go get him out of prison. Verse uh, number uh, 14, and then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. They said, get this guy up here quick. He shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. 
And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it, and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Now let me just say, that's true, isn't it? Couldn't Joseph understand dreams? I mean, God gave Joseph a dream. Joseph understood that. God gave the butler a dream, and Joseph understood that. And God gave the baker a dream, and Joseph understood that. And now God's given Pharaoh a dream. Isn't what Pharaoh said true? I want you to see what Joseph said. And this is so important. Joseph said in verse 16, Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer in peace. I love that. See, Joseph had been through a lot, hadn't he? He had to overcome a lot. The hatred of his family, the lies of Potiphar's wife, the time in prison that he should never have been there to begin with. And he could have stood before Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, you know what? I've come a long way. Let me tell you all about myself. And he didn't. He said, Pharaoh, it ain't me. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with God. Everything to do with God. He shall give you the answer you're looking for. Let's turn over to Proverbs chapter 20 real quick, and I want to show you, I'm coming back to Genesis, but I want to show you a couple verses in Proverbs that when I read this, God spoke to my heart about and reminded me about. Proverbs chapter 20 will be the first one. And verse number 6. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. And I like to think I'm going through a, a, doing, a, doing a devotional in Proverbs. We're putting up online. I hope it'll be a blessing to you. If you're interested in watching it, just a couple minutes a day on thoughts from Proverbs. Proverbs has got such good wisdom in it. I want you to notice what's, what God gives us here through Solomon in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. Solomon writes these words, God gives him these words here, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And what Solomon is simply saying is this, that word proclaim means call attention to. He said, if you ask anybody about themselves, or you ask anybody about, the, about them, they, oh, I think you'll learn, they love to talk about themselves. Love to. They like to promote themselves. Most men will tell you all about themselves and draw attention to all the good things about them. But then he goes on to say this, but there's a difference between oftentimes what we proclaim and what we truly are. And he said a faithful man is, more, is better, in a sense, than the one who can draw attention to all the good things about himself. God has given to all of us different talents, different graces, different abilities, and different things that we can do. And God has given to us different strengths and different weaknesses, and we oftentimes are very familiar with our strengths, and we can really talk about our strengths, but he's saying when it comes down to it, the talk is not what's important, it's the fact that we are faithful before God. Yeah. But most men, they like talking about all the good things they can do. But instead of calling attention to ourselves and crying to others, in a sense of crying out and showing others what it is we are, well, just be faithful. Just be faithful. Mm -hmm. Look over in Proverbs chapter 27. He gives us a similar thought here. Proverbs chapter number 27 and verse number 2. Proverbs 27, 2. <clears throat> says, let another man praise thee. And not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. So when it comes down to it, let others be the ones who talk about what they see in you. Don't be this a self-promoter or the one who's always putting yourself out there. You know, we live in a day and age where everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. They have a truth. It's insanity. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be the one at the top. Everyone wants to be the one that's seen, that's noticed, that goes viral. Uh, the viral. Viral. That's a terrible word. <laughs> it goes viral. Everyone wants to... <laughs> that's a very different word. Everyone wants to go viral. 
Everyone wants their video to be the one that, uh, you know, on YouTube that everyone sees and have thousands of people watching them and, pr and praising them and, 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 pr and, and seeing how good they are. But you know what? At the end of the day, what God says is this. Listen, you just be faithful where it is that God has put you. You don't need to put yourself out there. God knows where you are and God knows what you're doing. Just be faithful to him and let others worry about the rest of it. And as Joseph stood before Pharaoh back here in Genesis chapter number 41, those are the verses he brought to my mind as I was reading this. I see Joseph as a man who had overcome a lot. I see Joseph as a man who had been through a lot. I see Joseph as the man being put forth. Hey, this is his opportunity, isn't it? Think about it. He's been wronged. He's been lied about. He's been thrown in prison. Here's his opportunity to stand before the king and tell the king about all the good things that Joseph is. And what does he say? Yeah, hey, king, it's not me. It's not about me. It's all about God. It's all about God. May I ask tonight, when it comes down to it, who do we promote more? Ourselves or our God? Who do we shine the light on more? Us or Jesus? Are we more interested in making sure that everyone else thinks that we're big stuff? Or are we interested in making sure everyone else knows how big of a God we have and how big of a God we serve? Are we self-promoters or God-promoters? In our passage of Scripture here in Genesis, Pharaoh tells Joseph all about his dreams. And he says, Joseph, he said, I had these dreams. It says in verse 17, he said, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, or seven cows. And he begins to tell Joseph about these dreams that he's had, and he explains to Joseph all about the dreams that he's gone through. And then Joseph tells him in verse number 25, he says to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. He says in verse 26, the seven good kind are seven years and the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. What he's saying is you had two dreams, but they both mean the same thing. He said you got seven good cows and seven good ears. That's seven years. And then he goes on to say in verse 27, the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. And he explains to Pharaoh, this is what's going to happen. you got seven good cows or seven good ears. That represents seven years of plenty. And God's going to give us seven years where we just have so much food, we don't know what to do with it. Isn't that a lovely thought? <laughs> so much food. That's like America. you got so much food, you can't eat it all. So much good. I think I heard a story about two boys who were talking about they, they were living in Africa and, and eating food out of the dump. And one of the third friends of theirs came up and said, Guys, I've heard about a land where you can go and you can eat until you die. And he said, What's that? It's America. You can just eat all you want, and eventually you can die from eating. You have so much in America. So you can have so much food, you're not going to know what to do with it. He said, But after that, you're going to have seven years of famine. It's going to wipe out the seven good years, so you better start getting ready. That's what he tells them. Verse number 29 says, Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled into Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now notice this. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years to come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not through the famine. So Joseph says, let's save 20%. Whatever we make, save it. Because we're going to have a famine. By the way, that's good advice. God's blessing you now. I'm just, this is for free. This isn't part of the message. God bless you now. Start putting some aside. Because guess what? It comes after the good years. Some bad years come sometimes, don't they? Boy, we're so, we, we get this mindset that we got it. We got to spend it. We got it. We got it. You know, we got blessing us. We're, we have so much and we can just spend, spend, spend and never save. Guess what happens when the famine hits? Yeah, they don't have so much after that, right? So he said, save up. He said, the famine's coming. He said, save up 20%. He said, find a man to do it. Just find somebody. This is Joseph's opportunity to say, hey, Pharaoh, I'm the guy. They didn't. Goes on to say in verse 
37, the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thee. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. I'm not great. And Joseph said and say one thing about himself, about his qualifications, about his struggles, about his victories, about his strengths. He just said, Pharaoh, it's all about God, and this is what God's going to do. And Pharaoh said, hey, then you're the guy. You're in charge. When it comes to life, we have a chance to promote something. We can promote ourselves, or we can promote our Savior. It's very hard to promote both. In fact, it's not possible. We can stand up and say, I am this, or we can stand up and say, God is this. We can stand up and say, I can accomplish, or we can stand up and say, God can accomplish. We can stand up and say, I am smart, or we can stand up and, stand up and say, God has blessed. We can stand up and say, I am good. We can stand up and say, God is good. It's one or the other. And Joseph said, it's all about God. It's all about God. Turn with me, if you will, quickly to 2 Corinthians, and then I'll give you a couple points, and we'll finish up. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> I want you to look here with me at verses 17 and 18, and I'll give you a couple points tonight, and we'll wrap it up. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, in his chapter, Paul is talking about the gospel and talking about the authority that God gave to the apostles to preach the gospel and tell others the gospel. And I want you to notice what it says in verses 17 and 18. Paul writes here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. That word commend, we don't use that very much in our English language too much. We don't say commend. How many used the word commend recently in conversation? Anybody? That's because we're not talking to anybody, but it's okay. We're so... <laughs> The word commend actually means recommend. That's what it is, it's the word recommend. It's become the word recommend in our language. It means to put forward, to show off, to give to somebody else a recommendation. And what it's saying here is when it comes down to it, we can recommend one of two people in life, us or God. And it is not commending ourselves that gives us approval before God. It is God commending us to others. We all want to have our moment. We all want to have promotion. At least in our society, it seems to be that everyone's striving to get to that place where everyone thinks something of them. But when it comes down to it, God knows where we are, Amen. and God can promote us as he pleases. Let me give you some thoughts tonight. First of all, let me say... When it comes to promoting God over ourselves, we ought to be more concerned with what God knows about us than what men think of us. We ought to be more concerned with what God knows about us than what men think about us. See, men think about us based on what it is they see, and their perception is the behavior that they see. And oftentimes we live our lives wanting to impress people and to please them, and we're afraid of what they think, and so we want them to think the best of us. We see our future as being in their hands, and therefore we want them to shine on us a little bit and to think that we're really good people. But the honest truth is, depending, no matter what anyone else thinks of us, there's a God who knows so much about us. Amen. And what he knows is more important than what others think. It truly is. If everyone else thinks you're crazy and God knows that you're wanting to serve and follow him, let everyone else think you're crazy. It's fine. It's 
So what God knows is so much more important. When Joseph was, a, was, was working in Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife came in and tried to entrap him and, and into sin by trying to seduce him to commit adultery with her and she, Joseph ran out of the house and she grabbed his coat and she was running and held on to his coat and her husband came home and she said, this man came in here and tried to assault me and he tried to, tried to have his way with me. Potiphar got mad and threw him in prison. Everyone thought Joseph was a horrible person, but you know who knew the truth about Joseph? God did. Didn't matter what everyone else thought. Didn't matter that everybody else thought that Joseph was a horrible person. Who was it that promoted Joseph to second command in Egypt? God. Potiphar's wife didn't matter then. <laughs> Imagine that. Joseph gets thrown into prison after being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and then years later becomes second command in Egypt. Imagine that conversation. <laughs> Potiphar comes home from work one day, turns on the TV, and there's an announcement. Doo, doo, doo. We, have a new, we have a new administrative head of the entire land of Egypt. It's Joseph. What in the world? <laughs> yeah, God knew all about what was going on. And Joseph's integrity was more important than what he, everyone else thought of him. His integrity and him doing that which was right was more important than And everyone's perception of his reputation. Turn on over with me to John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12 has to be more concerned with what God knows and with what men think. Here's what people think about Christians so long as we're pleasing and serving God. That is what matters. Look here with me, if you will, in John chapter 12, verses 42 and 43. At this time, Jesus is preaching to the people there, in, in, uh, in, to the Jews. And I want you to notice what it says here. In John chapter number 12, verse 42 and 43, Jesus is teaching the religious people, and it says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogues, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. See that? Oh, yeah, they're more concerned with what people thought than what God knew. Said, so, oh, we believe in Jesus. We do, we do. But you know what? If we say that too loudly, people aren't going to like us very much. And if we say that too loudly, they're going to throw us out of the synagogue and throw us out of church. We don't want them to know that we love Jesus because if they do, they're not going to like us. They're going to look down on us and make fun of us. Persecute us. And so they love to hear this from people. You know, there's going to come a day when all that stops. And when we stand before God, the only thing that's going to matter is God says, well done. Well done. Well done. A good and Servant. faithful servant. Amen. Most men will proclaim their own goodness, but a faithful man, one who will stand and do what's right, who can find that today? Be more concerned with what God knows than with what men think. Number two, be more intent on pleasing God than pleasing men. Here they wanted the praise of God, but let me show you another verse. Turn over to Galatians chapter 1 real quickly with me. Galatians chapter 1, we'll wrap it up with this. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter Number one, again, Paul is talking about preaching the gospel and talking to people who have turned away from the gospel and he's rebuking them. Look here in Galatians chapter 1, we'll read from verse 6 to verse number 10. Paul's rebuking the people here because they've turned away from the gospel here in Galatians chapter 1. He says in verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed. From him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. For do, not, do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. 
What he's saying simply is this. There's a whole lot of people out there teaching a whole lot of things. So many of them are wrong. They're preaching a gospel that's not really the gospel. They're talking about a Jesus that's not really the Jesus of the Bible. It's a Jesus they created in their own mind. It's not the Savior. And I'm going to call them out. He said, because what am I trying to do? Please them? I said, no. So I'm just trying to please the Lord. It doesn't matter what everyone else would think. I want to please my Savior. So when God says, this is the way it is, we don't need to stand up and be belligerent about it. But we do need to stand for what it is he says and not worry about whether or not it pleases anyone else. We've got to please our Savior. Amen. Because it's not about me. It's about him. When Joseph stood before Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, I had a dream. And I have heard that you're the man. You're the man, Joseph. You're the one that can tell me all about my dreams. And Joseph stood there and said, Pharaoh... No, it's not me. It's not. It's him. And as Christians especially, we need to strive very hard at putting down that one person in us that wants so much to take the glory from God, and that is us. It's not about me, God. It's about you. It's not about me. It's about him. It doesn't matter what the position is I have. It doesn't matter what it is I can obtain. It doesn't matter about my fame and fortune. It doesn't matter about me being the big shot. It's all about God being the one. So as we go through our life, are we promoting God or are we promoting us? Joseph, here's your opportunity to right all the wrongs that have been done to you, to stand before Pharaoh and call for justice against Potiphar's wife and Get yourself back to your homeland where it is that you can be back and free you from the slavery you were unjustly put under. And, and, and Joseph said, it's, it's, not, it's not about me. It's about God. It's about God. Let's pray this evening. Father, we know it's all about you. And as we look at Joseph's life and all that he had to overcome in his life, all the difficulties, we can, we can look at it and say, oh, Joseph, he's a strong man. Oh, Joseph, he was an overcomer. Joseph, he was just one that had such fortitude and strength in himself. And what did Joseph say about himself? It's not in me. It's not in me. God is the one that will give. And God is the one that will give the answer that you seek. And Father, as we go about our lives, it's so easy to want to put ourselves forward and push ourselves to the forefront and proclaim all the good things about us and how great we are. And forget that it's not truly us. It's you and your strength that allows it to happen. Help us, Lord, to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory that you deserve to let off a desire to please others and to get others to think so highly of us and help others to see how great you are and how mighty you are. Thank you so much for giving us this look at the life of Joseph and helping us to see all that he had gone through Reminds us so much of what we have to go through in life. The injustice, the ingratitude, and sometimes, sometimes downright malicious behavior by others. But how even through all that, we can overcome if we keep our eyes set on you and move diligently toward you, leaving behind everything else. We ask you, bless Lord, as we depart tonight. We do pray again for the requests that were made and ask for your blessing upon the hand of these people. And Lord, bring us back together again that we may praise you and serve you and love you all the more. And we ask you in Jesus' name, amen. amen.